You guys. Okay. All right, we're now being joined by student athletes from Texas Southern, Dante Clark, Demontre Jefferson, and Trayvon Reed. Just a couple things uh, before we start. We ask that you silence your cell phones and other mobile devices. There is no flash photography or video recording allowed, but for video, video you can use the video distribution sites right across the hall, back of the room, take a left. It's right across the tunnel. Uh, when you're asking a question, uh, we ask that you direct your question to a specific student athlete. Just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around. Just identify yourself by name and affiliation. And you can find transcripts of this press conference, the others for the shoot arounds today, and for the post game ones tonight and tomorrow night at NCAA.com slash transcripts. So we'll open the floor for questions for our student athletes. Yeah, back right. Uh, Braden Wagley, University of Dayton. Uh, how did you guys feel when you found out you were playing in the first four? What was the excitement level in the locker room? Dante, can you answer that first? Uh, I think everybody was just excited to be in the tournament. I don't think it mattered who we played. But it was rumors that uh, we was going to play at LIU Brooklyn, which was my old coach from UMass is at uh, LIU Brooklyn. So we was just – I was hoping that we played them, but I, I'm sure everybody was excited just to be in the tournament. Montre? Um, when I found out that we was um, – Going back to the tournament it was kind of like a relief after everything we've been through this season, overcome all the adversity. So um, I was very excited and very proud and very happy for my team and uh, for the school to be going back uh, back there and for the uh, university. Um, I say it was a big relief knowing that we was going to the tournament. Um, that's what we talked about at the beginning of the season. And I say that uh, my team was just excited. Everybody was excited. Culture staff was excited. Yeah, Crystal. Uh, just talk a little bit about some of the adversity you guys have faced this year and um, what you've done to get to this point and make yourself into the NCAA tournament. Trayvon? Um, it's been plenty of um, adversity. Um, Starting the season off zero and thirteen, everybody. Uh, I don't think nobody expected us to be here. So um, it's good that we been able to uh, overcome adversity and um, just stay together as a team. Montre, um, I say a lot of adversity came on and off the court. Um, just like with um, everybody coming in new to the team, finding roles. Uh, finding who our score was and um, suspensions early on through, during the season. And uh, we we didn't really have our team this full season, or we didn't have our team really until the um, conference tournament back full. So um, just 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 um, those suspensions and you know, um, getting everybody attitude and learning everybody roles. Dante? Yeah, I'll say it to piggyback off what Tra Trayvon said. I think I – the adversity came at the beginning of the season when we started off 0 and 13. We was we was kind of upset that we wasn't winning games because we was in the game, so we just couldn't pull it off at the end. But we stuck it out throughout the season, and we uh, got better as a team when we needed to get better to win the SWAC championship to get here. Yep, back right. You talked about starting 0 and 13. Was there a specific turning point in the season that you guys can point to as why you guys turned it around? Dante. Uh, I don't know if it was a specific point, but I think uh, like within these last six or seven games, we all became better as far as like scoring wise. So and that's what we good at the scoring. So we all got in the groove and just ended up sticking out at the end. Montre? Um, yeah, after 0 and 13, we kind of we kind of knew we needed to do a new game plan which was uh, when we looked and see why um, teams was competing with us that we felt shouldn't be competing with us or why we lost games we felt we shouldn't have lost. We looked and see that we were going away from a lot of our scores. So late in the season, we um, just tried to outscore teams and uh, get stops later on and um, have uh, Trayvon shut down the middle. So now I think like throughout the conference tournament and the last two games before the conference tournament, we might have been averaging 90 points plus. Trayvon? 
Um, I was turning around point was um, when our team started sharing the ball, um, we started playing together as a team. Um, and um, like the mantra said, like he always tell me, just go out to everything and shut down the middle. Um, he really just, he just made me go hard. The team made me go hard. And um, I'll just say that's, that's our turning point. That was, that's when the, our turning point was. Back right. Demontre, coming from last year playing in this tournament and this year finishing the conference tournament as the MVP, what have you learned coming into the tournament this year? Oh, it's just, it's just getting started. Like, like um, when it happened, I got very excited, but I, I snapped back into reality because I, I came I came here last year still excited, still happy to be here, and um, just came in here really just trying to get the experience instead of worrying about the task at hand. We came here and we took a bad loss to North Carolina. So just coming here this year just to remain focused at the task at hand, realize that it, it is a good feeling. It is an um, accomplishment to be here, but it is a task at hand. Yeah, back right again. What was some of the uh, what was some of the advice some of the advice that you gave to your other teammates uh, about this big NCA thing we have going on here? Um, it, I just I just told them there's no pressure. Don't come in here and try to do anything we haven't been doing. Um, come in here and let's play our game. Let's score the ball. Let's let's get stops. Um, Trayvon stop down, shut down the middle. Uh, Dante score the ball throughout the game. Bruce makes shots, and I think we should be able to compete with anybody in this tournament. Back right again. Dante, coming into the SWAC this year, you're playing in the NCAA tournament. How do you feel coming in this year? Uh, I feel good that the goal was accomplished because leaving UMass and coming here, uh, the focus was to make the tournament and win the SWAC championship. So it definitely feels good. I'm just excited to be here. So when I'm excited, good things usually happen. So. <laughs> Any further questions for our student athletes? All right, Dante, Demontre, and Trayvon, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Uh, next start of a press conference at 1140. We are scheduled to be joined by the head coach of Texas Southern, Mike Davis, at 1140.
Yeah, you guys want to start early? <clears throat> All right, now being joined by the head coach of Texas Southern, Mike Davis. Hey, Mike, how are you? Uh, Mike, if you'd like, you can start with an opening statement. Well, we're excited to be here, for sure. Um, it's a great opportunity for our program, great opportunity for our fans to uh, enjoy you know, our program being in the NCAA tournament. Questions for Coach Davis. Back right on the aisle. After being here last year, what kind of advice could you give to your team on how to handle this moment? Well, we started from day one talking about being here and what a great opportunity it would be to uh, play uh, in Dayton. I love playing in Dayton. I wanted to play a game last year to give you an opportunity to, to at least try to win a game. Uh, the matchups uh, are always equal here in Dayton. And unfortunately, last year we had to play North Carolina in the first round. But we're excited about it, and our guys are excited about it. And it's a game that we feel like we have to go out and play really, really well to win. Back right. Of course, everybody knows Coach Davis. This is your first time here at the tournament. So what did you share with the team coming into the tournament this season? Well, this we year? just talked about um, being the best basketball team we can be on March 7th. And March 7th is when our conference tournament starts. And if you're the best basketball team on March 7th, then you'll give yourself an opportunity to uh, get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, you don't, you want to be good in November and December. January is very important. but. The most important thing is being that really good basketball team in March. Yep, back right. And so what were your main takeaways from the tournament last year, and how did you apply them throughout this season? So I didn't hear you. Excuse me. What, what were your main takeaways from the, from the tournament last year, and how did you apply them to this season? Well, last year we played North Carolina, who was number one in the country in offensive rebounds, and uh, we was really bad at blocking out. And so we knew it was going to be tough for us in that game. This year, uh, we just talked about sharing the basketball, um, playing at a, at a nine or 10, which is the highest you can play with attitude, chemistry, effort. Uh, we just talked about being at that level. And right now, over the last seven games, we've averaged uh, 91 points a game over the last seven games. So offensively, we're playing really well at this point. Back right. <clears throat> Coach Davis, you spoke about this game being the HBCU championship. How do you feel about coming into this tournament playing North Carolina Central? I feel great. Um, I know I know their coach well, Coach Martin. In, I'm not sure how long he would be there. He's a really good basketball coach. Uh, watch his team on film. Uh, he's one of. The, he's a really really good coach. They run a great system, and uh, it's going to be a very difficult game for us just because of the system that he run and. And we only had a couple of days to prepare for the game. That's that's always tricky in the NCAA tournament uh, when you when you just have a couple of days to get ready for a team. And now uh, we have to prepare for them. And I mean, I've, I've counted 18 plays, different plays that they run. And of course, we can't cover 18 plays in a, a day or so, two-day period. But um, great opportunity for us. Great opportunity for them. Uh, one team would definitely advance. Uh, to the next round, and it'll be good for both programs. Back right. Your players talked about the rocky start you guys had. What? Obviously, you guys have built momentum throughout the season. What's the key to continuing that momentum here through March? Well, our schedule was designed for us to get to this point. You know, people talk about us being 0-13, and there's not one team that we played in the conference that we were favored to win. You know, we go to Gonzaga and we Washington State, Clemson, Ohio State, and I always talk to our guys about training their brain. You know, people talk about muscle memory, but muscle memory, um, I don't think it, it really exists. It's about training your brain because your brain, your muscles do what your brain tells it to do. And I wanted my guys to be tough. I wanted my guys to be able to handle adversity. And it's easy to train your brain when everything is going well. And I designed this schedule not for us to feel good, but for us to get better. And so when we was 0-5, 0-6, that's when the phone calls started coming, the text messages about keep your head up, you know, stay focused, stay positive. Well, my head never was down. Because realistically, 
if we beat the Kansas or Ohio State or Syracuse or Clemson, wow. You know, the whole country is talking about that. And that tells you how, how not good they are as a program. And so the 0 and 13 never bothered me at all. And I kind of chuckle and laugh when people say, you guys really struggled. No, we didn't struggle. You know, if we would have won, then the teams we would have beaten would have been struggling. And so my math, and my, my math is like 18 games in conference. We can go 16 and two in conference and we go 0 and 13, then that's 16 and 15. But the problem we had, we had injuries that really prevented us from playing well in conference where we was 16 and two or 17 and one. And then we had a couple of suspensions that uh, prevented us from having that great record in conference. And so we've only had our basketball team, our full basketball team, uh, the last seven games. And the last seven games, was, we were seven and oh, uh, we averaging 91 points a game. We led our com conference in scoring. And we're playing the basketball that we should have been playing from day one in conference. And so if you win one or two non-conference games, then your record is 18 and whatever it may be, then you win the three games, now you're at 21 wins. And it's worked for us every year. The last three years, I haven't played a home game in non-conference the last three years. And so it's all about training your brain. It's all about understanding that no matter what people are saying, you have to focus on what's important. And what's important for us has been the best basketball team that we could be March 7th. Any further questions for Coach? Mike, thank you for your time. Good luck Appreciate tomorrow night. Appreciate it. Thank you very yep. much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Next scheduled start of a press conference is at 12.05. That's when we will be joined by some student athletes from North Carolina Central at 12.05. And I'm just, I'm thankful because, you know, we just, we could have lost. We came in as a sixth seed, but we ended up winning the MAC, I mean, the MEAC tournament. So it's a special moment, and I'm just grateful. Here on the right on the aisle. You guys have had a long season. Can you guys just explain some ad adversity you guys have had to come over as a team to help you guys get here? Rashawn, can you answer that first? Sir, can you repeat that? Uh, what are some of the adversities that you guys had to come over to get to this point in the season? Oh, um, it was a lot of adversities. For example, like we went through, we went through a stretch during the season where, like, you know, we were on the losing streak, and it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't really looking good from there. But, you know, that's that's kind of part of it. You got, you have to be mentally strong as well as physically, just so you know you could prosper through those situations. Everything that's gonna go your way. So, it's just, just, just thankful. Pablo, um, the adversity that we faced. Uh, as a team, I feel like it was the beginning of the year when we was playing the non-conference games. Uh, we just, we had a whole new team and we didn't know how to play with each other yet. And that was like the adversity that, that we was facing during those times. And once we started clicking and, you know, getting to know each other and then playing for each other, that's when things changed. Any further questions for our student athletes? Yep, here front right. A lot of people are talking about the job that Coach Moten has done to turn this team around again, a real experienced team that he brought here last year, but then to bring this team back with no starters returning from last year's squad. Can each of you just take turns talking about Coach Moten and his impact on you? Pablo, can you answer that first? <clears throat> um, Coach Moten, you know, he's amazing at what he does. Uh, he's very smart. 
he always come out with, you know, with a game plan. And for us, it's, it's our job to execute. So um, him, he, he prepared for moments like this. And it all starts from the beginning, from the summertime all the way to like the end of the season. So just just how he works and how he thinks and how he prepares, it just it just pay off every time when we just have to do what we got to do. Rashawn? Um, coach Moten is an excellent coach. And uh, just to piggyback off what Pablo said, he comes up with a great um, game plan every time. And it's really just up to us to, ex to execute the game plan. I feel like, you know, with the game plans that he come up with, as long as we go out there and give it our all, you know, he's going to have us prepared. So it's really up to us, as long as we execute the game plan, that we give ourselves a pretty good chance to compete at a higher level. That's what it's about. Any further questions? All right, Pablo and Rashawn, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night.
All right, now being joined by the head coach of the NC Central Eagles, Lavelle Moten. Uh, Lavelle, if you'd like, you can make an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Um, this never gets old. Um, definitely excited to be here. Uh, I need to get in better shape. I'm tired after that walk up that ramp. Um, to be honest with you, um, we had some injuries early on in the year, and many people didn't give us a chance. I lost two of my best wings. Um, Rashawn London towards ACL, Alex Mills uh, towards Achilles. He's back now, but he's not the same player, and we were going to rely heavily on those guys. So it kind of put us in a bind, forced us to go to plan B. And it's unusual because we're starting two freshmen in a walk-on. I've never done that in my life. Um, I never had any intentions on doing that in my life, but here we are. And there was a time during the season where we weren't playing our best. We were just trying to figure it out. And um, there was an article, not an article, where there was some, some things said on a blog that someone sent me, and they called this off. And it was my last motivating tactic to use to the team. I said, look, man, and as a man, there's certain things that other men or people just can't say about you, and that's using the word soft. And from that point on, it seems like our attitude took off to a different level where we fought to have something to prove. We fought to establish a legacy. And we took some momentum into the uh, MEAC tournament and we were able to um, win it. And here we are back in date. <clears throat> Questions for Coach Moten. Yep, front right. Coach, uh, while you've been here in North Carolina since you've had back-to-back -back MEAC championships, but now this is the back first back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances. How's it feel to be back here almost exactly one year later from the last time we were here? You know, it's kind of surreal. You know, the thing about these moments, you don't get a chance to fully embrace them because you're constantly busy. You're constantly doing something. You, you know, we're running on E right now, so we, we, we have to recharge our batteries. Um, <clears throat> You know, from the celebration, we played four games in five days. Uh, we just called a long flight. So we definitely have to recharge our batteries. But, you know, the momentum and the jubilation of the moment has carried us thus far. Um, we understand the task at hand. We understand it's going to be business as usual tomorrow night. We're playing a really good basketball team coached by a tremendous guy who I consider a mentor and a friend. Um, and Mike Davis, I don't know why he's not at a Power 5 school. I challenge anyone to um, match his resume. You know, some of the things that he's done is tremendous. And, you know, we, we're definitely excited to be here. We understand we have our hands full. But right again. Coach, the Eagles had to play four games to win the tournament uh, last week. How much do you think this has helped this team prepare for the large NCAA tournament environment? You know, I, I think it was good in, in the fact that um, you don't have many, much time to prepare. Um, but on the flip side of that coin, it can become a perfect concoction of disaster because you our legs, you know. It's, I'm, I always can gauge their fatigue level based off mine. And I'm extremely tired. And I haven't ran up and down the floor not one time. They did it four times in five days. So I know when I need to rest them. I know when we need to go hard. So yesterday we just did some layups and got some shooting in uh, just to get our legs back under us. Um, but at this point in the season, if you don't know it, you don't know it. Um, so it's more about personnel and scouting report. And uh, that's what we did yesterday for Texas Southern. So we understand we got a, a monumental task at hand. Front right. Coach, you mentioned two freshmen in a walk-on in the starting lineup for the Eagles. The last two NCAA appearances, you've had seniors in the backcourt. What have you told um, these freshmen to get ready for t uh, tomorrow's game? Nothing. I, I, I think the uneducation <laughs> is a, a good thing sometimes. That's what we call it, the uneducation of a point guard, the uneducation of a shooting guard, and the uneducation of a, of a walk-on. They're – they're not knowledgeable enough right now to know what they're up against. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I think when you, when you know um, the, the 
task at hand, sometimes it can freeze you. Sometimes it can paralyze you in the moment. They're just going out there playing free as possible, and that's how I want them to play. We understand there's two freshmen in the walk-on, um, but we're no excuse basketball club. And we demand the same thing that we're going to demand from anyone else, and that's excellence. Um, and, they, and they certainly know that. So they've, they, they're battle-tested, and we don't consider them freshmen in the walk-on anymore. We consider them uh, sophomores at this, at this point in the season. Yes. Yep, right here on the left. Uh, Coach, you've talked about your long-standing relationship with Coach Mike Davis. How do you feel going to play against him tomorrow? I hate it. Um, you know, the irony is he called me Saturday, late Saturday night, early Saturday, Sunday morning at around 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, he said, Coach, I just wanted to congratulate you on your win. And I said, man, thank you, man. I said, congratulations to you. I just finished watching you because my family was out to dinner and we was watching them at the bar. And he said, you think they're going to have us play each other? And I said, I hope not. He said, yeah, they wouldn't do that. I said, yeah, they wouldn't do that. And I said, man, all the best. And we hung up the phone. And after the selection show, we called each other and said, man, they did that. And I was like, yeah, they did that. So I hate it. I hate it have to be uh, two HBCUs uh, clashing um, because I have the ultimate respect for his program. And truth be told, we've kind of been the representation of each league. And I wanted the world to be able to see what each league can offer. Um, it's unfortunate. but. It's best to be on this side of the coin than on the other side not getting a bid at all and not having to play anyone and having your season be over with. But, you know, I have a, a deep affinity for Mike and what he's accomplished and what he's done. And, um, you know, I wish I could tell you guys about some of the conversations and the insight that he provides for me just during the year and how to navigate myself through this thing because coaching will make you jump off a bridge if, if you're not careful. So you need that mentor, you need that guidance, and he's been that uh, focal point for me. Any further questions for Coach Moten? Well, thank you for your time. Thank Until you. Tomorrow night. Appreciate it. Next scheduled start of a press conference will be at 12.50. We will be joined by student athletes from Syracuse at 1250. That'll be followed by the head coach of Syracuse, Jim Beheim.